Hors in just one situation and this is a savagely festive company Spirit Halloween Watch all the fat files. Yes, another fat files video and this is about a Halloween. I guess Obviously fat files has been making this like, uh, you know American businesses video recently Which is very interesting to me because American businesses is basically world businesses Let's just say because most of them are spread out around the world and that's what you use right uh, Starbucks McDonald's shit like that and there are some that, yeah, obviously it doesn't exist outside of US because they're doing so well in US, they don't care about it. Like, okay, Costco and shit like that. So, I don't know. This is one of those ones. Uh, what does this have to do with it? Is this Halloween store? Like South Park one, like, uh, you know, Halloween sells Halloween shit. It's going to be interesting as well. It's October, I meaning we've got about 45 seconds until we're all bombarded by the sounds of children crying and in-laws complaining all while Mariah Carey, all I want for Christmas is you, sings in the background for the next two months of our lives, just completely unable to hear our own thoughts. But in the meantime, today we're talking about Spirit Halloween, you know, the Halloween store that pops up in the abandoned Kmart every year and sells a bunch of single-use costumes that have funky names because they don't want to actually pay for a license for a famous character, that place. All right, just so we're on the same page, it's gonna sound like I'm talking smack about Spirit Halloween. Well, they have one, the Conan went to one of the stores in one of his skit 10 years ago or something, where there was like many different, like there was also Conan O'Brien one, but it, it had a different name. So different names, right? But it just basically implied like this is what we are talking about, right? So that's this one a lot throughout this video i'm not okay a i respect the hustle b i'm absolutely fascinated with how savage this business model actually is speaking of business let's go ahead and get this ad out of the way and now a word from our sponsor delete me delete me did i do it right no you were supposed to walk from the other side of the room just like i had to eh, work smarter not harder this is why i never finish i heard that you forgot the light Oh, hey. Thanks. Mm. Anyways, delete me. Super straightforward business. You give them money, they turn around and they make sure the data brokers aren't selling your personal information on the internet. So here's how this happens. Pretty much anytime you use a free app or internet service, that app or service isn't actually free. What they're doing is they're harvesting your personal information, then they turn around, they sell it to data brokers, and then the data brokers... There are sites that ask you, accept all cookies or accept only critical, uh, like, core cookies. There are sites like that. But most of the sites accept all cookies or manage cookies. So you're supposed to click on manage cookies. Now there's a whole list of things you're supposed to click and unclick and all that shit. They know you're not going to do that. This is like the Apple terms and conditions shit, right? This whole South Park episode. I just click accept. They want you to do that. So always like look for the site which has that element of like accept all core cookies and doesn't ask you to manage. It's like, okay. They're just essential cookies, not just go accept all essential cookies, not all of them. That's a genuine site. Any other site just like, oh, manage, like you do it yourself. They know you're not going to do that. Brokers sell it to anybody that has money. The good news is these data brokers are legally required to stop selling your personal information if you formally ask them to. The problem is there's a bunch of different data brokers and they all have a different process for you to formally request that they quit selling your information. That's where Delete Me comes in. Delete Me monitors all the biggest data brokers for your personal information and as soon as it comes up for sale, they automatically write in and have them take it down as soon as possible. And then as long as you're subscribed to Delete Me, they will continue to monitor checking and rechecking for your personal information at these data brokers over and over and over again to make sure if they do ever come in contact with your data again, they have to delete it again. So if that's something you'd be interested in, I will have a link and a discount code down below. Let's get back to the video. All right, our story begins in the early 1980s with the founder of Spirit Halloween, a guy by the name of Joe Marver. And no, I'm not about to tell you the story about some dude that grew up and his favorite holiday was Halloween and he wanted to run a costume store and he overcame adversity to run the biggest costume store in the world. No, he was running a normal brick and mortar women's apparel store known as Spirit Women's Discount Apparel. And then one October in like 1981, 1982 there was this locally owned I'm not gonna lie Patterson has told so many badass stories like that if, if he just said that like yeah there was a kid he didn't have much to do he just he just lived on a farm and he saw a guy walking in walking around with a skeleton costume and he just decided that I'm gonna make the best Hall Halloween store of all time and the story begins I was like yeah that makes sense right because so many stories are kind of like that there was a guy you know just like going on the roof because he can see a, you know, a plane go by 
I'm going to be a pilot and all that shit. There's too many stories like that pop-up Halloween store that would go into the empty business right next door to him and he noticed that they were getting more traffic and more customers in that single month than he was getting all year long. And Joe being an entrepreneur immediately recognizes how brilliant this business strategy actually is because a significant portion of the revenue that a company makes during the entire year is actually made just during the holiday season, right? It's the end of the year. It's the playoffs. It's the Super Bowl. It's where you're getting the most bang for your buck. Tis the season to be merry. Well, that's my name. Oh shit. And this Halloween store is essentially skipping all the regular season games and just showing up straight to the playoffs like it's a championship, making a ton of money, and then dipping out and taking the other 10 months of the year off. It's brilliant. Now that in itself is enough, but then you look at what these Halloween stores are selling and it makes it that much more appealing because they have extremely low expectations, right? This is basically a single serving Halloween costume, right? Nobody needs to be dressing up like a slutty nurse multiple times. This costume needs to function for like the four to six hours hours that you're going to be wearing it during Halloween and then you're going to throw it in the trash. And guess what? Because you're only wearing that costume for one night, you don't really care if it's comfortable. You don't really care if it fits that great. Just the standard for the product that they have to sell, it, there is no standard. The oh my God, that is so insane, right? Uh, you don't need to worry about quality that much. It just needs to work once. Obviously, you, you, know what, you don't want to like give royalties and shit. So you're not going to use like real names have some kind of knockoff names because why would you not right in uh, you know like world of like clothing and things you need to think about the quality of clothes even there might be royalties like who came up with that like okay how do you get that right and there's like naming scheme branding scheme right uh, you need to think about like um, you know like exposure right you need to think about the fashion shows and shit just to promote your things way too many things and then you get something like a uh, whatever, like twenty, thirty dollar clothes, right? Even their clothes are insanely cheap, which tells me their clothes are supposed to be even more cheaper if they go through all that shit and still cheap, right? So someone like this doesn't need to worry about any of that. Just like we, they just open like once every year, right? They don't have to think about royalties. They don't have to think about quality that much. They just need to make the cheapest way and reliable way they can, and there you go. R for that is in hell, okay? Nobody cares. Everybody that goes into a spirit Halloween knows beyond the shadow of a doubt they're basically buying garbage. Sputnik. Sputnik. <laughs> wow, I don't have the worst costume anymore. <laughs> and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that because everybody knows exactly what they're getting into, okay? Why would he... Okay, as an American, he could have, like, dressed up as Voyager or something. I get it, Sputnik was first, but that's Soviet Union, like... Okay, I don't know. I think people from France just Google which is the most impressive thing. Oh, Sputnik was first. Okay, I'm going to use that costume. Should have gone as like Voyager or something. Okay, it's like Little Caesar's Pizza, right? What's their slogan? Hot and ready. Is it good pizza? <laughs> Motherfucker, it's hot and it's ready and it costs $5. Do you want it or not? You know what you're getting into. And I know what you're thinking. What about Karen, right? We all have that one aunt. Our mom has that one friend. We all know that woman that has the audacity to go to a restaurant, eat the entire entree, and then bitch that it wasn't cooked right, trying to get a discount, if not get the entire thing for free. That's the beauty of the entire thing. The entire... Mmm. Mmm. Something feels off. Mmm. Half the pizza is empty. I think salt is a lot, don't you think? There's always someone who always criticizes shit, right? You just know as soon as you start, sit down and start eating, there'll be some kind of criticism is coming, right? Immediately. It's like later on, I understand, like you eat food, you criticize it, but immediately your salt is off. Something's not right. It's never right, right? But, yeah. Higher business model has anti-Karen technology integrated right in, right? Because guess what? You can't be dissatisfied with how your Halloween costume performed until after Halloween. And guess what's going to happen after Halloween when Karen rolls up in her white suburban ready to berate a bunch of retail workers about how itchy little Timmy's eczema is after wearing his fucking costume? Nothing. Nothing's going to happen because it's an empty fucking building now. They're gone. So we use that 50 cent meme, right? Where he just laughs and runs away with the car, right? Bye. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> These temporary Halloween stores literally get to roll up during the holiday season, the busiest, most profitable time of the year, and open a new store 
increasing traffic because everybody wants to go check out the new store and they open it under the pretenses that they're having a going out of business sale, which also increases the amount of foot traffic and people that want to go to this store. And then they make all their money and then they fucking dip. It's absolutely brilliant. It's so good. It feels like it's a bank heist, but it's completely above the table and fair game. So Joe being an entrepreneur recognizes this and is like, yo, this is what the South Park joke was. One of the South Park episodes, I don't know what season, it's probably older. Where like, I think it was a blockbuster or something, went out of the business and like they all opened the Halloween store. Is this what's supposed to be, I think, right? I'm going to do that from now on. And in 1983, he converts Spirit Women's Discount Apparel into Spirit Halloween. He makes over six figures in like six weeks. And then he's like, yeah, I'm doing this from now on. From there, every year he opens up more and more Spirit Halloween stores in his region. And then by the 1990s, he's operating like 60 stores every single year. And in 1999, he actually gets bought out by Spencer's Gifts. From there, he kind of becomes a CEO for a little bit. Now I still believe he sits on the board. But from here is where things really start to take off for the company and they get absolutely absolutely huge. Fast forward to 2024, they're operating 1,500 of these stores all over the country. And they're not just like small retail places on Main Street and small town. Yeah, people usually ask questions like, why do people uh, sell shit when they're like doing really well? It's not like selling just something like, oh, I'm going to give you, give me the money, I'm going to walk off. Even though there are situations like that, usually it's like selling a major stake at something right so if you're doing this and you're 100 percent own that there's a heavy risk there like okay this is the fast and now what if three years from now something else comes by and nobody buys your shit entire your business thing just went out of the window right if some big chain or big company buys you they buy like 80 percent of your stake still giving you like 10 15 percent or 20 percent depending on how you want to do it right and now you got the money for that 80% and you still have a stake on that, but the big company has stake in it as well. So if it tanks, you're not out of money. You're, you're not on the road, like on the streets now, right? Like you can do something else. Right? The people, you know, people usually wonder like, what happens when pe things go bust? Usually people who own that doesn't just own that and they just move on to something else. It's just profit and loss for them. So when you become that big, you basically sell it like that. So if if everything goes you know like left or right you, you're not on the street right because that's that type of situation happens a lot as well like people oh i don't want to sell to anyone and just it just got a fashion like blockbuster type shit happens and there you go like i'm out of money somebody who's like really powerful and rich and now suddenly is like poor America. No, these are like abandoned Kmarts that are at least 10,000 square feet or more. Okay, I'm going to say that a little bit slower because I don't feel like you're picking up what I'm putting down. Okay, Spirit Halloween manages to open operate and close down 1,500 10,000 square foot retail spaces in the span of eight to six weeks. Okay, do you understand how fucking crazy that is? Spirit Halloween. Wait a minute. They have that kind of a uh, production where they can, they have team and employees who can manage that. What do they do other 10 or 11 months? All of them like, okay, bye. Because if it's like small thing, I understand like they're just like family business or like employ people temporarily or whatever. And then those people can like have other jobs other 10 months. But if it's like this big, like proper money making, profit making company with employees, what do, do those employees do other 10 months? Figure shit out. Uh, like what are we going to sell next year or something? Or think about production? Like, I don't know has some of the best logistical capabilities of any entity on the planet. Off the top of my head, the only ones that are competing with Spirit Halloween are like the United States military and Amazon Prime. That's it. Those are the only people that have better logistics. How powerful is Amazon that you can compare that like that, right? You know, in any conversation, Amazon will come, come up as like a heavyweight thing. Like you can c compare their logistic power with like US military. Amazon went insane with the, the, even in India, like Amazon is dominant now. Most of the things I order online is probably from Amazon. Logistics than this fucking Halloween store. And what's crazy is there's still an even more impressive aspect to this business because most of their full-time employees are on this realty team and this realty team goes around and gets all the leases for these 1500 locations, right? Do you understand the ability of those realtors to close a deal? It's absolutely 
insane. Just so we're all on the same page, these realtors' full-time job is to track down and find companies that have gone out of business and still have their retail space. And then they roll up being like, hey, I work for Spirit Halloween. Here's my business card. You like that? That logo of the Grim Reaper as I'm coming to visit you after your business just died? By the way, that's not the Grim Reaper. That's Jack the Reaper. It's a play on Jack the Ripper. Ha ha. Puns. Anyways, sorry your business just died, but um, I had an interesting proposal. What if I throw a Halloween party inside of its corpse? Hold up there. It's literally the com What if there are like business is doing fine and there are not many stores is gonna be closed down? Like what you gonna do? Like not open? I guess in this kind of like a big ass country that is United States, like with three time zones, you probably gonna find something somewhere, even a smallest shop that maybe they're thinking of closing. I don't know commercial real estate equivalent of like donating your body to science, right? They're just rolling up to old Best Buys and Kmart's like, hey, you're not selling flat screens in here anymore. Let me get some animatronic skeletons and shit in here. Sell some fake blood. You know, why not? The entire business model is hilarious because it seems like this savage cutthroat business model, but actually literally nobody's getting hurt because it's like, what else are you going to do with that empty retail space? You know what I mean? Like you get to make a couple of bucks. All the people in town get to drag their little three to five year old kids to see the haunted house while they buy their Halloween costume costume and then they fuck off till next year like there's no losers in the entire equation and it shows because they are making a ton of money in a six week span last year they made 1.1 billion dollars in what? six weeks okay that's like 23 million dollars they made a billion so he went from six figures at once and now like this many stores making a billion in this holiday season like, I know there are people like, oh, look at that. Like, I got extra bonus in my job. Wait a minute, I did more business. This holiday, this Christmas is going to be good. This is literally extremely few, one of the few people who can literally like, oh, my Christmas is always good. Because every Christmas I make a billion dollars. That is insane. Like, imagine the, their household, right? The owners. All just like, just buy, let's buy a Maybach every fucking year, every Christmas. Because I just made a billion dollar a day that's two hundred and twenty thousand dollars per employee now granted the revenue not profit i'm sure they have a ton of overhead on top of that but it's still impressive that they're making 1.1 billion dollars in six weeks a couple of other interesting things about halloween they absolutely yeah the, the, you know the earlier point i made like they don't have to think about all the middlemen because they're not uh paying royalties they're not thinking about like you know like uh advertising like fashion show and shit like that that you other companies have to worry about clothing company they're not worried about quality that much that they need to think about what type of you know what type of thread we should use what type of technology even that has technology right look at the under armor and all those companies like gym wear right uh, it's really surprising the type of technology they use to make those clothes it's not just like any other clothes they don't have to worry about any of that just make shit sure that looks good enough right that people don't want to buy like skeleton and this and that right witch or whatever the fuck you want to be for halloween what is the latest trend just to make that and make profit so they must have insane amount of profit ratio in that one absolutely do not like being made fun of how do i know this well because the infamous saturday night live skit where they did like a three minute bit making fun of spirit halloween and then spirit halloween retaliated by tweeting this i don't think that's retaliation that's they're just trying to like dig back right I wonder if they're going to make a fat electrician costume next. You know what? I'll do it. I'm a piece of fucking white trash. I say it proudly. Here, tell these people something they don't know about me. All right, let's end this on the high note. Spirit of Halloween, in addition to making a ton of money, also runs a children's charity known as Spirit of Children. And since 2006, they have raised over $146 million, as well as provided all the costumes and necessities for these children's hospitals to be able to throw Halloween parties every single year. So in conclusion, that is Spirit Halloween, probably the most wholesomely savage company on the planet. They literally show up with their Grim Reaper logo, offer to throw a Halloween party in the ruins of your failed business, make a ton of money, and then dip out before Karen can show up wanting to to return the product and then they donate a bunch of money to children's hospitals and then get ready to do it all over again next year thank you for watching best way to support the channel is go buy some merch over at the fatelectrician.com quack bang out wait a minute they could do that in all christian countries right like britain and everywhere okay 
before maybe you think like European Union might have issue with that, but Britain is not part of European Union. Why are they not expanding there? Like they could do that. I don't know. Expand there. I guess like they are doing enough. Like they don't care. Like another company who doesn't care that much because they're already making way too much money you, there. Why go anywhere else? But yeah, that's like you, you know, spirit Halloween. Spirit doesn't have that great uh, image in US, as I say, with Spirit Airlines and shit. But Spirit Halloween, yeah, I, I don't remember SNL. I mean, like, then again, I don't like keep up with all SNL skit or whatever, right? Sometimes they can be annoying a lot of time. But yeah, like, I don't think that was like a, you know, like jab, like I'm going to get back to it. This is like funny thing. So they might make Factrician thing as well, just because he talked about it here. And Factrician is like, yeah, his videos do go viral, right? It's like a great promo type, right? just, just the way, you know, sets in tech has like a, this uh, effect on video gaming. Factorism can have an effect like that. Why not? So they would be really interesting if, if they actually do that. All right, well, that was a savagely festive company, Spirit Halloween. I didn't know that. But at this point, nothing would surprise me when it comes to USA and capitalism, right? They would make business out of basic nothing. You realize, oh, wait a minute, that's a multi-billion dollar uh, business. Sure, why not? All right, I'll see you next time.